Welcome to this lecture series in coordinate geometry. In this lecture, we'll look at how to write down the equation for angle bisectors and let us recall what we need. So we need to know about half planes. Suppose we have a line whose equation is this and we have some arbitrary point, let's say x0, y0. Then substituting x0 in place of x and y0 in place of y gives us a number. When that number is zero, this point lies on the line. Otherwise, this number will be either positive or negative. And the fact is that all the points on one side of the plane give us the same sign and the other side will go give us the opposite sign. So if a point here gives positive sign, then all the points here will give positive sign and all the points here will, get, will give negative sign. And conversely, if a point here gives negative sign, then everything here will give positive sign. So this is one algebraic way to detect sides given two points. We can detect if they are on the same side just by substituting the abscissa and ordinate in place of x and y and detecting if we get the same sign. And then we need to know the formula for the perpendicular distance. So if we have a line, uh, let me draw different slant. So suppose we have this line ax plus by plus c equals zero and we have a point x naught y naught. Then the length of the perpendicular dropped is given by this formula. So we did this and with that let us get started. Here are some problems for practice. This is basically just to make sure that you do these exercises. Uh, we discussed this and that in class and this is an extra one. All of these facts are familiar from, from high school geometry, but all of this can be proven using coordinate geometry. All right. So angle bisectors. So suppose we have two lines, call them L1 and L2 maybe. Let's say this one is L1 and that one is L2. So L1 and L2 are two lines and they are not parallel, so they intersect at some point. Then we can draw two angle bisectors, one for this angle and the other for that angle. So this is the one for this angle and this is the one for that angle. So angle bisector recall is if we are talking about this angle, then the angle bisector is the line such that these two angles are equal. And similarly for that guy, so I'm sure you know what angle bisector means. And the question that we are asking is, can we somehow express algebraically, or meaning in other words, can we write down the equations of these two things? And indeed we can. And the key fact that will enable us to write down the equation is the following. So L1 and L2 are two lines. Then a point P, so this is just a geometric fact, nothing to do with algebraic geometry sorry, nothing to do with coordinate geometry. A point P lies on an angle bisector, either this or that, if and only if the perpendicular distance of the point P with both these lines is the same. So if and only if the distance between P and L1 is the distance between P and L2. This is a very simple fact. Suppose we have a point on this angle bisector, then you drop these two perpendiculars. We want to show that these two have the same length, but you apply right angle hypotenuse side congruency criterion to establish that these two triangles are congruent uh, because this angle and that angle are same. And in fact, you can use, you can use angle angle side rather than right angle hypotenuse side. So we will be using angle angle side criterion. We have a point on the angle bisector, so these two angles are the same. We drop these perpendiculars. Now this angle, this angle, and this side are the same because this angle, this angle, and this side. So therefore, these two sides are the same. And we have established this. Similarly, if a point is on the other angle bisector, this time we'll be applying congruency on these two triangles. So one direction is clear and the other direction is, is an exercise. If you have a point satisfying this, then it has to lie 
either here or there. All right, so with this in mind, we just need to say, or we notice that therefore, a point x naught comma y naught lies on an angle bisector, not the angle bisector. <clears throat> there is no such thing as the angle bisector because <clears throat> there are two of them. So lies on an angle bisector of angle bisector formed, I mean, sorry. Therefore, a point lies on an angle bisector of these two angles if and only if the distance between the point and L1, which I'm writing now, is equal to the distance between the point and L2. So, <clears throat> so therefore, the set of all the points lying on either angle bisector, meaning the set of the points lying on this plus shape, are precisely the points which satisfy this equation. So one can say the equation for the points lying on the angle bisectors is the following, right? And since there are absolute values involved, we can remove the absolute values, but we'll have to put plus minus sign, right? So all we are saying is, if we write uh, mod alpha is equal to mod beta, this is same as writing alpha is equal to plus minus beta which means that alpha is either plus beta or minus beta. So we are just using that fact. So the points lying on either of the angle bisectors are precisely the points which satisfy these equations, either with a plus sign or with a minus sign. So that's the equation of the two angle bisectors. These are two equations. Uh, if you take the plus sign, you'll get one linear equation that will be one of these and the other will be the other one. Now generally it will be of interest to locate which one are we talking about. Suppose the origin was here and we wanted this angle bisector. Which one? The one which bisects the angle containing the origin. So how would we find out the equation for that one? Which sign to choose here would be, would be an interesting question. So that is something that we will illustrate by means of an example. So here is the example. We have these two lines, which I have suggestively drawn here. This is not an accurate figure, but sufficiently accurate. Uh, fine, so these are the two lines. Then we want to find the equation for the angle bisector, which bisects the angle containing the origin, so this angle. We want this one and not that one. Now, for a particular problem, one can look at the diagram and conclude. So what one can do is, one can write down the two equations, one with a plus sign and one with a minus sign. And the one which gives negative slope will be the correct one because if this figure is sufficiently accurate, that will be reflected in the algebra. But we do not want to look at a diagram and then do the algebra. We want a solution which does not make use of a figure. So even though I have drawn a figure, I will not be using the figure in order to solve it. This will be just for explanation or expository purposes. All right, so let us write down the equation, or even before we write down the equation of the angle bisectors, let me make one adjustment. So here, the equation given was 5y minus 12x minus 8. I have deliberately written it this way. So I have made the constant term positive. This is just for convenience. You will see why this has been done. Of course, changing the sign of everything does not change the equation. It is the same equation as that. 
it's just that we have deliberately made the constant term positive, of course, then we had to change the sign of these two. Fine, so we have these two equations. And now, here is the thing. Let us, uh, let us try to locate this region, the region that contains the origin. Since the constant terms have been made positive, the origin gives us positive sign on both these, both these expressions, right? So if I substitute 0 and 0 in place of x and y, I get a positive number. And if I substitute 0 and 0 here, I again get a positive number. So this part gives me positive sign on both and let us record, I mean record, not record, record that in the diagram. Positive for both. And this side will therefore give negative for both because it's opposite to both of them. So the other one will give minus minus. Here we get the same signs. And here we will get opposite signs. The two lines will give opposite signs. Uh, again, to, to see which one gives plus, which one, which one gives minus, we would need to look at the diagram, but just for the sake of completing it without uh, much care or without the need to really know which one gives positive, which one's need, uh, negative, I'll just write minus plus and plus minus. Fine, so these are the four regions in which the plane is partitioned. Okay, now let us write down the equations for the angle bisectors. So by what we discussed in the previous slide, the equations are three square plus four square is uh, five square and therefore there is a five here. This is equal to five is square plus 12 is square is 13 square. So there is a 13 at the bottom. So these are the two equations. Let me separate them. The first one is with, with a plus sign, the second one will be with the minus sign. Okay, we just need to decide which one is the one that we seek. Okay. So, so suppose there is a point on this, this one, the one, the angle bisector, which, which is the one that bisects the angle containing the origin. So if we have a point on that angle bisector, it should, when, when we substitute that point in, in these expressions, it should either give us both positive signs or both negative signs. In other words, this, the, this angle bisector, the points on this angle bisector give us the same signs on these two things, right? So we, we seek the one which gives us the same signs on both these expressions and reject the one which gives opposite signs. So that is the criterion that we'll, we will use. And what we will show is that if you have this guy, the one with the plus sign, this will give us the same sign. I mean, any point on this equation will give us the same sign on these algebraic expressions. Why is that? So suppose you have you have some point x0, y0 satisfying the first equation. So let x0, y0 be such that it, it is on the first line. Let me write a plus, doesn't harm. So, sorry, I, I wanted to write this with the positive sign. So let me it doesn't change much for us, but anyway. Yeah, the constant term I just want to keep positive. Right, so suppose we, we see uh, a point x0, comma y0 lying on the first of these lines. We want to show that x0, comma y0 when substituted in these expressions gives us the same sign. Okay. So this is some, some number, this is, generically it's, it's non-zero unless your point is this one. If x0, y0 is not this one, it will be non-zero. And whatever is this sign, same is the sign of that guy because you just shift 13 to, to the other side. 13 by 5 is a positive number multiplied by whatever is the sign of this, the same will be the sign of that. 
So the point x0, y0 gives us the same sign on both these expressions. And therefore, it relies on either this side or that side, and hence on the correct angle bisector, meaning the angle bisector that we seek. So that's the criterion, basically. If you want to remember it, what you can do is, suppose you want to locate the angle bisector which bisects the angle containing the origin, what you can do is, first you write down the lines with their both of their constant terms positive, and choose the one with the plus symbol. Right, so initially I had written it the other way, but then I corrected it. So if you choose the one with the plus symbol, it will automatically be the angle bisector that contains the origin. All right, so I hope this was clear. And with that, I want to end this lecture. As usual, like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you next time.